What's up guys, welcome to this video. Welcome to the FNG Academy. My name is Abel Hernandez. Some of you may know me as the videographer and editor for the FNG Academy. Now I don't necessarily take care of everything. Buck shoots and edits all his own videos out of Texas, but when we've got some of that heavy duty stuff, the fancy cinematic shit, if you will, that's where I play my part. In this video, we are launching a new series called Beers and Breakdowns, where we are gonna sit down and watch military action style movies, action movies, honestly, whatever comes our way, and we're gonna sit down and talk about it. I'm obviously gonna be taking the role as a civilian. I have absolutely no tactical experience whatsoever. I've never been associated or been in the military. So as I watch these movies, like I'm sure a lot of people do, you watch some of these scenes and then you wonder, is that something that's actually possible or is that kind of stretched out just for the sake of a movie? That's obviously where my boy Buck comes in. You guys know very well, he's a former Green Beret. He can answer all those questions for us. I'm gonna be obviously the eyes from the special operations background. We're gonna check out their tactical accuracy and all that stuff, even though sometimes the accurate stuff is surprisingly far-fetched. But the best part about this is we're not only gonna be watching the movie, we're also going to be drinking beer. In this episode, we're gonna be breaking down a really sick movie I think you guys are gonna like, Extraction. My man, Chris Hemsworth, crushed it. I love that movie. There were some things that were fucking off the wall though. We're gonna talk about those, and there were some things that Chris did surprisingly accurate. So without further ado guys, let's get upstairs in the theater room and let's check out Extraction. All right guys, so we're up here. We got the, we got the needed beer, required beer. Yeah, Take if you sip. couldn't tell that we were drinking. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> totally sober. All right, so without further ado guys, let's get started breaking down Extraction. Extraction. I'm excited. This is actually a dope ass movie. All right, so the first question I got is, like, obviously dudes get out of the military and they need to find something to do. Is this something that they actually do? Like, is this, like, do they turn mercenary and end up in, like, different countries like India and go extract people or whatever Chris is doing in this movie? Honestly, I know it seems super far-fetched that an ex-operator would be an operator, you know, whatever, Navy SEAL, Green Beret, um, CAG, whatever unit you're in. It seems super far-fetched that they would out be out doing this kind of thing. Just to throw some facts in there, ex-Green Beret led failed attempt to oust Venezuela's Maduro. This isn't that far-fetched. Like, people do get out of special operations and try shit like this. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is we're going to get into the scene where Chris Hemsworth just, like, gets up, and he looks like he's either drunk or, like, hungover or whatever. He gets up, and he just walks up to a cliff, and he just jumps off of it. So let's check the scene out real quick, then we'll talk about it. Okay, I mean, am I the only one who looks at that and says either like, no way, or I feel like my legs would have been broken when I got to the bottom. So honestly, the way that I think about it is you make your money off being tactical, right? Right. So is it worth the risk to jump off what looks like fucking five stories and potentially break your ankle, your leg? As a matter of fact, my team sergeant used to tell us, don't even jump off the vehicles when we're prepping the vehicles. You get in the habit of, you know, you're prepping the 50 cal on a Mat V, which is, you know, five, six feet off the ground. You sit down and then you jump off because you want to be quick. He said, listen, guys, save your knees, save your ankles. We need you in combat. The last thing you need to do is get hurt leading up to it. So don't take the risk. The way that that scene was actually shot was they put a mat about 12 to 11 feet under, um, under that cliff, under like a shorter part of that cliff. Chris Hemsworth, they film him jumping off of the cliff and landing on that mat at the bottom of it. Then his stunt guy jumped off of the actual cliff. They filmed that and then they cut it together in post. So it's actually his stunt guy jumping into the water, which is fine. Obviously, you know, their guys need their stunt guys. They don't want the pretty faces to get hurt, but I thought it would have been pretty cool if like he straight up Jackie Chan that shit, jumped off of that cliff and landed in the water. Just throwing that out there. Oh shit. <laughs> so let's stop here so the dude puts a gun to his head and he's got the hammer cocked on what looks like a 1911 and chris doesn't flinch at all first of all fuck that noise you could literally tell me this thing is unloaded 
And if it makes a clicking noise, I'm going to flinch like a motherfucker. And then Chris does like a cool guy move and he's like, there's no magazine in it. And smokes a dude's cigarette, which is pretty disgusting. Like those guys clearly haven't brushed their teeth in probably two years and you're smoking after their cigarette. There still could be a round in the chamber. Just because there's no magazine in it does not mean that the gun is not loaded. If it was my stupid ass in there, I'd be there and be like, there's no magazine in the bottom. And then when he pulled the trigger, I'd just get my head blown off and I'd be like, I don't know, I guess in the afterlife or wherever the fuck I'm gonna go, I'd be like, well, I was wrong about that. Turns out there's a round in the chamber. Whee! All right, so what we're moving on to right now, what we just saw is Chris Hemsworth, um, he just gets done like strangling a dude. And I'm still trying to figure out how he did that. I don't know if he like somehow got that zip tie around his neck and did it, or if he used that guy's own clothes to do it. I, don't, I, don't really, I, couldn't, I didn't really catch it, but uh, when he gets done, he like takes the zip tie, he ties it with his mouth, and then he breaks it off of his knee. Obviously, you guys just saw that. I kind of feel like that's a little bit of a Hollywood move. I mean, in my personal opinion, not having any experience, I don't really think that's something that you could normally do, right? I mean, zip ties are meant to be pretty strong. Yeah, so right move, wrong material. So right move as in you do use this maneuver to break a material, but you're usually doing it with duct tape. When you're getting your hands bound together, it, you need to know what material they're gonna use on your hands. So if it's a zip tie, I wanna place my hands together and then I wanna take one of my hands and turn my wrist to the side. What that's gonna do is create more space between my wrists. So that way when they zip tie it and they think it's tight, I then have the room to place my wrist together and I have room to slip my hand out. Mm. So that's one tactic with the zip ties. What Chris was doing in this movie is what you would do with duct tape. All right, so we're about to watch a scene or like a clip of a scene where Chris Hemsworth just absolutely annihilates everybody in a room. I mean, we're talking like pinpoint accuracy with a gun, obvious like hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, and uh, he's just basically wrecking everybody. So let's watch it real quick, and then we'll talk about that, because I have some serious questions about this. Okay, so uh, I think this is the part where anytime you're watching a movie like uh, John Wick or just basically any action movie where you have one guy basically just beating the shit out of everybody all the time. And while it's sick to watch, obviously we're all rooting for him. Um, we want him to whoop everybody's ass, so we don't really question it. But if you actually look at it, you watch the movie a couple times, you kind of stop and you're like, I don't know. Like, I understand that, that I understand our guys are trained very, very well. But you're talking about having like nine dudes in a room. Uh, however many are in that room, but I always like to set up for like a really like a video I don't want ever want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Okey <Okay>, cookie. <cookie. laughs> anyway, he just starts beating the shit out of everybody, and you got to wonder, can he really do that? What people don't understand is that we're not training all day every day how to fight, shoot and fight, shoot and fight, and that's basically what John Wick and all these cool guy movies get honed down into: shoot and fight. All you have to do is get thrown into a hard situation, shoot and fight, right? If that was the case, yes, we'd be able to do that. But that's not the case. Greenberries have to do demo. They have to uh, do, you know, train foreign militaries how to shoot, move, and communicate. We have to get the team ready for deployment. There's so many things that we have to do that's on our plates. A small amount of time gets allotted to shooting. And then even smaller amount of time gets allotted to fighting and then knife fighting. You can't take that specific of a skill set and then add it to these environments and expect a Navy SEAL, a Green Beret, any special operations to be able to shoot, move, communicate, and fight like that. It's just not gonna happen. You asked Sean to bring some beers. He bring the entire case. By the way, in case you guys think at some way we're doing this like TV production type thing where we act like we're drinking beers and we're not drinking beers, we're actually drinking beers. I mean, both of us are actually pretty buzzed at this point, so I just want to clear that up in case you guys think we're getting all Hollywood on you guys. That's not how we roll. Bucky's a little drunky. Bucky's a little drunky. There you Drop go. Drop in the comments. Who wouldn't wear that shirt? Bucky! 
Get in the car! All right, so in this scene, he has, let's talk about his rifle real quick. He's got an AR-15, which is just a 5.56 platform. It's basically what I would be happy with. It's got an EOTech, a red dot. Um, EOTech typically has a dot in the middle and then a circular dot around it like a halo. And then he has a four by magnifier. It's a flip up magnifier. Um, I do not like the magnifiers. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys. I just don't like them. By the way, the guy chasing him is running an MP5, which is a nine millimeter. Uh, it's got semi-auto and full auto, and it's also suppressed. Nice, on the account that I have absolutely no clue what the fuck I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm just gonna agree with everything that he says and say, dude, dead on, spot on. Everything you just said right now makes perfect sense. Thanks, mate. Ah. <laughs> And this is where I really, really have some questions. And it's only because I know Buck has been in combat, seen it firsthand, you know, as well as been a part of it. Dude gets in a fight in the street. They both pull out knives. And apparently you can just get hit by a They both get hit by a car, right? Chris Hemsworth gets hit by a car and apparently, like, gets so unfazed that he just lays there for a minute, finds time to, like, run off, grab a van, goes over, and then he hits the other dude and launches that dude into something, that guy just bounces off of it and falls on the ground. But what I really want cleared up right now is if, number one, if you're thrown down with the dude in the street, you guys both have knives, you guys are both absolutely just kicking the shit out of each other, um, how much damage can you really sustain in a hand-to-hand -hand combat like that? I mean, hand-to-hand, -hand, but I mean, there's a knife, but whatever. How much damage can you sustain in a situation like that? And how do you feel about, I don't know, I don't know if you've been hit by a car, but do you think that you'd be able to sustain getting hit by a car? So there's a, there's a, actually quite a bit to break down here. And honestly, realistically, I've taken knife defense courses before mm -hmm. in the military provided by special operations. And the one thing that they teach you is if you're going to fight with a knife, you're going to get cut. Mm. And that like is going to happen. It's going to happen. And they've done things where they take fake knives and they put red lipstick on it. Mm -hmm. And you're in a white shirt. And they say, just do whatever you can to not let me touch you. And within 30 seconds, they say time, and you look down and you have red lipstick all over your shirt. And Chris Hemsworth would have been a black belt in some fucking judo, taekwondo shit that he could not get touched. I don't know. Unrealistic. Some Steven Seagal shit, bro. Yeah, he's Steven Seagal. <laughs> Under siege, my dude. He's a cook. That's right. Only a cook could not get touched with a knife. Sensei. Getting hit by a car, the front of the convoy, this is my experience in Afghanistan. So I'm out front walking, it's nighttime, I'm under nods, and I'm like, oh shit, I think we're supposed to go that way. So I go back and I'm looking at the road, and I'm looking this way, and I'm trying to see my map, and under nods is a pain in the ass to try and figure out where you're at. I'm looking at my nods, I look up, and I get slammed in the back. And this Afghan in the front, he wants to impress his boss, and he feels bad that he missed the road, puts it in reverse, and punches it backwards, not realizing that I'm behind him. The mount that holds the tire of the Humvee slams me right in the back. So I was wearing plates in the back, took the air out of me. It was fucking terrible, and I had plates on. So getting hit with a vehicle, unimaginable. I can't even fathom getting up after. What are plates? <laughs> <laughs> fucking armor, dude. Plates, plate carrier. Plates are um, armor protective gear. <laughs> <laughs> they stop bullets, my dude. How's uh, that? Hey, does a helmet stop a bullet? Yeah. I've the seen ones like, that we wear, yeah. I've seen movies where guys get shot in the head and they're wearing the helmet and they die. I've watched no shit. I watched the dude get shot in the head right in front of me. With the helmet? Yep. And he lived? Yep. Does it fuck him up for a second? Yep. Mm. Not even fucking around. By the way, do me a favor because... This is obviously beers and breakdowns, so we're drinking beers. Speaking of beers. If you guys can please, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Uh, just like the video. Above all, like the video. It's going to push us back into the algorithm because what's going to happen, what's going to happen is that we've said fuck 
so many times, including the one I just said right now, that we're going to be demonetized in about 30 seconds. Done fucked ourselves out of money. <laughs> and as I am the editor, I, am, I, I don't feel like sitting there and, and editing out this many Fuckity, fuck, 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 You know? So to me, hands down, the movie is wrapped up in the bridge scene. He's trying to stay communicated with the aircraft, with his overwatch, and he is moving and shooting. He's single round fire. He's trying to aim, both eyes open. It's accurate, you know, shots fired. At one point, he skips rounds underneath the vehicle to hit the dudes um, that are on the other side of the vehicle. I've taken courses on that. You actually can skip rounds off concrete to deflect the rounds to hit people on the other side of vehicles. I think that the bridge scene makes this movie. I mean, I, I think the bridge scene is an absolute sick scene and like the whole thing. I mean, I think the movie's honestly sick, but Me too. that whole scene itself. But that's one of those things where, where I come in, where I would be watching this movie and I would think, can somebody do that? And to know that something like that is very realistic, very possible, and the guys that are fighting for us and fighting for our freedoms are that well-trained is just in my opinion it's 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 astonishing it's crazy all right guys and on that i want to thank you guys for watching this video if you guys want to see more of this please make sure and smash that subscribe button hit that like button on this video so we get pushed up into that algorithm hit that notification bell so you see all the future videos that we post we have plenty of stuff coming out for you guys as a matter of fact buck is like i said he's out here we're, we're taking care of business this whole week and we're going to pump out some content for you guys i can't wait for you guys to see what we are working on some awesome stuff um, it was really fun breaking down this movie, getting a perspective from, obviously, a uh, special forces operator, a former Green Beret, uh, and obviously your everyday, you know, according to Andy Stumpf, BMW pansy, <laughs> which, yeah, you got you know, you got to be able to laugh at yourself, so I'll take it. But thank you guys for watching this video. We're going to wrap it up here, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Recording just to do a test shot. I'm going to hang like right here. Back. Too far back. Just needs to come out just a Dude, sometimes I want to just be in a rap video. You know what I mean? Like just live in a rap video. So remember, like in the center, trying to keep you where you are. Right there. Fucking Lambos and chains, son. Beers. Looking, pouring it out for the homies. <laughs> I keep all these shots, by the way. Do it. This is a test shot. I'll run. Ah. <laughs> test shot over. <laughs> he, he said.